All right. So let's see. Uh, we are still in the Z sphere here, so that means I can make some adjustments. So I'll tap the W key. And uh, one of the things that's just going to be kind of a fact of life with, with geometry that is sourced from Z spheres is it's going to have more geometry than you need in some areas and not quite enough and odd triangulation in other areas and that's just kind of how it is. But again, because we're going to be jumping into a, a Dynamesh oriented solution, it doesn't really make that much difference. So I'm going to make this a Polymesh 3D. So this is the new geo, which means if I tap the A key, nothing happens. We're just uh, dealing with regular little geometry here. So the first thing I want to do is figure out what my ground plane is going to look like. So I'm just going to append a primitive. I start with the star. Make sure we select it in the subtool menu. And then I'm going to go to initialize here in the tool menu uh, and hit Q cube. So if I turn solo on, what you can see is there's a low poly cube where basically where the first Z sphere showed up, which is effectively the center of the scene as far as uh, ZBrush is concerned. So I'm just going to go ahead and call this the ground plane. And you can use the we'll transform gizmo here to get it approximately into position. And we really just need kind of like a neutral arbiter of what we're going to decide the, uh, the ground actually is, or in this case, the table. And that's going to work just fine. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is just start to do some very, uh, very large adjustments here. So the palm and the fingers need to be about the same thickness. For now, I'm going to go and hide the, because uh, I'm going to be playing with the bottom of the, the hand here. So I'm just using shift. And oftentimes when you're dealing with very, very low poly geo like this, using shift is very intense and you can actually end up kind of like melting the geometry, which is usually not exactly what we're trying to do here. So just reducing your Z intensity a little bit can, can be really useful. All right, so looking at the wrist, the wrist is definitely gonna be wider than it needs to be. So this is just move. I'm probably going to clean some of these up. Let me see here. You don't need Z modeler. Flatten. I like the flatten 404. It's very, very old school at this point, but I think it works a lot better than the new flatten brush. Damn standard clay tubes move. Yeah, that should, that should be the bulk of what we're actually going to need to make this happen. All right. I'm going to look from the top view here. I'm going to use uh, press the control button, which activates the mask, and I'm going to be using the mask lasso. So if you don't have mask lasso here, you can just if you have any access to any masking options, you can just click the button and it'll give you the the full menu here. And if not, you can hold spacebar. Let's see if masking is even on here. All right, just kidding. Um, yeah, hopefully you've got access to one of the mask options. If you're using my UI, you will definitely have mask lasso just sort of in there by default. And I think the first thing I need to do, I'm going to turn perspective on because now my reference photos definitely have perspective. So I need to be working a little bit more closely with what's going on there. Try to get as much of a one-to-one a -one as possible. So what I did there is I just masked the finger by holding control and outlining it. And then holding control and then clicking off the mesh, I invert the mask. And then if I click on the mesh, I basically blur the mask a little bit. So what I'm going to do now is actually switch from the transform gizmo to the transpose tool. And then just click on the mesh, tap R for rotate. And I'm just sort of looking at the angle. Actually, I think that one, the angle of the two fingers here. So that same process. And I'm using uh, W instead of R, because now we're moving R for rotate. And if I click on the mesh and I drag anywhere that is not touching another part of the mesh, what I'm going to get is basically a, a horizontal line in ZBrush space. So right now we're looking down, turn the plane on. So uh, it's you can see like this circle is bigger than this circle. That means there's an angle here. But if I hide this, 
uh, and I do that operation again, you can see the circles are all the same size. And what that basically means is this line is going to be horizontal if I decide to change my camera view. So what I want to do is I want to get this finger a little bit longer. Um, so non-uniform skew basically on that. So we'll go ahead and grab this finger here, same process. And I'm just going to point it kind of more forward. Again, just sort of looking at the arrangement here, uh, I can see based on the negative space of what's going on here, there's going to need to be some adjustments to like what's going on with this little gap area. Obviously, that's not really what we're looking for. So maybe I'll just kind of scoot this over and make it a tiny bit thicker, perhaps. And use the move brush. There will be a great deal more sculpting on this very, very soon. And the other thing that's important to note is the hand is definitely, this area is not wide enough. So what I'm going to do is basically mask all of that part there, invert the mask, and then we'll just kind of skew the whole thing just a little bit bigger. And then the thumb's going to need to come out as well. So technically, none of this is really all that complicated, right? It's mostly just masking. Oh, I should have, uh, let me blur it a little bit more. It's a pretty significant change there. So if you do get that, like, you know, stuff crashing into other things issue, just back up, blur the mask a little bit, and you should get a more uh, gradual transition. And I'm holding shift as I do this so that I can kind of see where down is. And I haven't added any subdivisions. We're still, we're still working on that very, very early level. So now I'm kind of looking at this here. Maybe do a little smooth on that, kind of relax it a little bit. Here we are there. So we'll do a nice, you know, cleanup operation on the uh, the upper boundary of the wrist, whatever we decide to do there. But that's pretty far down the road. Okay, and then we're just looking here. So I'm just trying to get this kind of a outline, right? Now, I don't have very many polygons, so I'm not going to be able to get all that great of a of a of a curve there. But I can still begin to rough it in. Pull that little thumb join out there. So a lot of this stuff is basically just trying to begin roughing in the stuff that's uh, like the, you know, the, the big reads, the big silhouette reads. I need to do some bending on the fingers here using the transpose. And uh, I think we'll jump on that in the next video.